Before we get started here, guys, me and Max just want to remind you guys to like and subscribe if you want us to be able to keep making content like this. Hey, it's right here. Buddy, don't you jump off the table. Me and Maximilian here would like to remind you guys to like and subscribe if you want us to keep making more cool content like this about reptiles and sometimes some other animals too. Who knows, maybe I'll even make a prairie dog video one day. What do you think, buddy? Well, this is the Backyard Biologist Chance Chick and you guys are in my home today because I want to answer your burning question of what is the best beginner snake to get into. If you're new to the hobby, you know, you're just getting over a fear of snakes, you're really curious about owning a snake but you've never had one before, I'm here today to lay out a couple of the best snakes to start with. Now there is no perfect answer to what makes the best starter snake. It all depends on what you're looking for in your animal and what you are capable of taking care of. And the very, very first snake on this list is the snake that you guys all expected. It's the one you knew that you'd see when you first clicked on this video, the one that you knew you couldn't make a best beginner snake video without. It is none other than the ball python. What is a ball python? So these guys, their Latin name is Python Regius. These guys are from Central and Western Africa, where they inhabit mostly like temperate to semi-arid grasslands and shrublands. And they feed primarily as babies in the wild on birds actually. But as they get older, their diet shifts more towards consuming primarily mammals, especially small rodents. They get their name ball python from their very distinct defensive behavior that they get, where they will roll up into a coil, a ball of coils, and they'll hide their cute little puppy dog face in the middle of those coils because if a bird or a large mammal or even a larger reptile is coming to get these guys, if they can hide their head in the middle of their coils, they can protect themselves. And they do have to be shy and they have to be aware of predators because they're actually the smallest species of python on the entire African continent. So most people, when they hear the word python, they associate it with rather large snakes. And while these guys are closely related to Burmese pythons and rock pythons and reticulated pythons, they are much more diminutive. They stay much, much smaller, never exceeding the size required to handle them in one or two hands. This guy right here is actually a male and he is pretty much full grown. Moving on to what makes these guys the best beginner snakes. To start off, we're gonna talk about the handling. The first and most important part of whether a snake is easy to handle is how big that snake gets. And with these guys, that's a very, very easy box to check. They usually are gonna average somewhere in the four foot range, but males stay a lot smaller than females do. I typically find that males are around three feet long. They can of course get a little longer and I've seen some small males that stay under three feet. And females are closer to usually four and a half or five feet long. As far as the physical handling of these guys go and their temperament, you have a very, very docile, accepting, easy to work with animal that doesn't mind being held. So if you've got a young child or someone who's not used to handling snakes, yet, their heavy body and their wide girth and the fact that they start off as kind of bigger babies makes them very, very, very easy to handle. You don't have to feel like you're being overly delicate with them. Not that we suggest you throw your snake around, but just so you know, you know, they are, they're, they're built in handles. They're very, very easy to hold and they feel very good in your hands. They are also very, very mellow snakes as far as their energy levels go. So like most pythons and boas, they have a very, very slow metabolism, which means they're never in a rush to go anywhere. So if you're a new snake handler and you're still intimidated by the quick motions of some snakes, ball pythons are one of the best choices for you. And all of that comes together to make them a very, very, very easy to handle snake. Probably the easiest snake on this list to handle. Their care, because their handling is so easy and because they're not a very large snake, their care is actually really, really easy as well. When it comes to their enclosure, a rule I like to use for snakes is the length of the snake should always be a little bit shorter than the length plus the width of the enclosure. And of course, if you want to go bigger, you can. We definitely don't recommend that you not spoil your animal. But as far as the very bare minimum goes, the enclosure should be at least as long and deep as the snake is long. So to put that in perspective, if you had a six foot snake, you would have to have at least a four foot by two foot enclosure for it to be appropriate in my mind. They are primarily ground snakes as adults, but as babies, they will climb and males do tend to climb well into adulthood. So if you give them stick and branches and multiple levels within their enclosure, you will find that they will utilize it. But otherwise, 
They need thick substrate, a place to hide, a water bowl, and a place to get warm. And that is about all they need, which makes their enclosure pretty easy to set up. The cool side of their enclosure can be anywhere from like the mid 70s upwards to like 80 degrees. And their basking temperature can be typically in the low 90s or the very high 80s is good. 88 to 92 degrees is, is a really good warm spot for them and that helps them digest their food. Of course, if they don't have access to that heat, they will run into digestion and growth problems, which can become further complications down the road. And as far as their humidity goes, humidity fluctuates wildly within enclosures. Sometimes the humidity will dip down very low and other times it will spike up, especially right after you spray down an enclosure. But you want the humidity to fluctuate somewhere around 60%, which is pretty convenient for most people because a lot of our houses sit at around 50%. So it only needs to be a little bit wetter than your house is. And of course, there's going to be varying levels within that enclosure as well. Giving your animal options to get wet when it wants to get wet and dry when it wants to get dry, cool when it wants to be cool and warm when it wants to be warm is absolutely paramount in taking care of an animal and making sure it's thriving. At the end of the day, one of the best pieces of advice I can give is give your animal options. If it wants something, give it the opportunity to put itself there. It will self-regulate. So as far as food goes with these guys, they take really readily to rodents in captivity, which is very convenient because rodents are probably the most reasonably convenient, efficient, and realistic food item for most snakes. And you'll find that all five of the snakes that I have here on this list do take very well to rodents because that is a huge factor in what makes a beginner snake good. And that being said, these guys, while they do primarily eat birds in the wild as babies, in captivity, they can start on rodents pretty readily. Even a full grown adult only needs to take a moderate sized rat. You know, you don't have to feed them jumbos or huge rats or rabbits or anything crazy like that. All that comes together to make these guys an incredibly easy first snake to handle, to care for, to get you into the hobby of keeping snakes. And that's not even to touch on the vast array of morphs that you can get with these guys. Every color and pattern combination under the sun, which is another really, really attractive aspect of these snakes. As far as price goes, a normal ball python is pretty affordable. You can usually find a normal ball python for just under $100 at most pet shops or online or anything like that. Of course, the market varies somewhat, but you can find morphs of ball pythons that go all the way up well into the thousands. And there you go. That's your pet rock the one that most people start with in their collection and a great, great ambassador for pet snakes everywhere. And now moving on to our second best beginner snake. And that's not to say that it's the second best, but the second one on this list. This one is probably the second most popular snake in captivity next to the ball python. And it's for a very good reason. It pretty much ticks all the boxes as well. And it's another snake you've probably heard of. Without further ado, the corn snake. It is immediately apparent why this snake is such a popular snake in captivity. Without even being a snake person, you can look at this animal and you can see that it's got a beautiful, attractive, unique looking pattern from the checkers on the bellies to the beautiful red saddles and the beautiful orange colors in between. These snakes are visually stunning even on their own. What is a corn snake? Corn snake, scientific name Pantherophis guttatus, is a North American species of rat snake. They are pretty much habitat generalists. You can find them almost in any habitat in the Southeastern United States, but they do tend to prefer like overgrown fields or temperate forests, but you'll also find them like in abandoned buildings and barns and things like that. Staying true to their name, in the wild they take mostly rats and other small mammals, but have been known to take birds and lizards opportunistically as well. So they are kind of generalists on their diet, but primarily small mammals make up most of it in the wild. Moving on to what makes them a very good starter snake. So these guys, when it comes to handling, are very, very, very easy. As far as size goes, you're looking at around four feet for an average on this snake. So very, very similar in length to a ball python, although they are much thinner body. Males are gonna be a little bit smaller and females are gonna be a little bit bigger, like you'll observe in most species of snakes. But four feet is generally a good bench mark for how big your corn snake is gonna get. Now, as far as these guys' temperament goes, they are very, very inquisitive. You'll notice they're a lot less shy, especially as adults, than a ball python will be. They're always moving around. They're always locking in on things that are moving around them, and they're always exploring. That level of activity can be a little bit intimidating to new snake keepers, 
but at the same time, that level of activity can be what attracts certain snake keepers that want a snake that does a little bit more than just sit around. Of course, like anything with a mouth, they have the capability of biting, but what makes them so popular is the fact that they very, very rarely do. They're super reluctant to bite, and oftentimes they're not even defensive. They, they don't mind being picked up. They're typically just as docile as a ball python. And while they are active and easy to handle, because they're a thinner bodied snake and they start off as a much smaller baby, they can be a little bit on the fragile side as babies. So if you're not super duper confident with your hands and you're a little bit worried about hurting one, you might wanna start with a slightly older snake or lean towards a heavier bodied snake like a ball python. But once they get to adult size, they're pretty durable as well and very, very intuitive and easy to handle. Um, they cling to your hands well and they climb well, so they're not very unwieldy. Moving on to care. An enclosure for these guys is very, very simple as well. Because they don't get very big, around four feet long, if you're using my rule of thumb, a 40 gallon is gonna be more than appropriate for a corn snake for most of its life. They tend to like climb space throughout their whole life a little bit more than a ball python. So if you can give them arboreal space, multiple levels, fake plants, or real plants if you go the bioactive route, they will appreciate those places to hide and get off the ground. But otherwise, very, very similar. A good absorbing soil with plenty of depth, a hide, a water bowl, a place to get warm, and they will be content. Now, as far as temperature and humidity go for these guys, a temperature gradient is pretty easy to maintain with these guys, just like a ball python. Their cool side of their enclosure can be anywhere from the mid 70s to the low 80s, and the warm side of their enclosure can go all the way up into the very low 90s with a hot spot of around 90 to 92 degrees if you can achieve it. So those kind of temperatures are usually pretty easy to replicate in people's homes, which goes a long way for making these guys good beginner snakes. As far as humidity goes, again, like most of the snakes on this list, somewhere in that 60% range is good. Most snakes like it a little bit more humid than we do just for those shedding processes and staying hydrated. And like all snakes, they should have a space to get cold, a space to get warm, a space to get wet, and a space to get dry when they want to. Just like ball pythons, these guys eat rodents in captivity right out of the egg, and even better than ball pythons for some people, they never even have to graduate from mice. You never have to make that price jump or that size jump to rats. Put all that together with the absolutely gorgeous pattern that exists on these animals and the wide array of morphs that they come in as well, and you have a very good candidate for the second most popular snake of all time. So moving on to our number three on my list of top five best beginner snakes. Now this is a snake for people who want to get into a beginner snake, but still want a little bit of size on their snake. And this species, or I should say these two species, do tend to play a little bit of second fiddle to ball pythons, but they're just as awesome and they get a little bigger. And with no further introduction, we have the Boa Imperator. This guy specifically I'm holding in my hands right here is a boa constrictor. He is a true red tail boa. This is a Suriname locality. So he is from deep in South America uh, where these guys still get very big and have the true deep sanguine red tails. Now, most of what you find look very similar to this, but stay a lot smaller. Anything you see that's referred to as a Colombian red tail or a Central American boa or just a red tail boa or a Colombian boa, what that's referring to is the Central American boa, which visually is incredibly similar to these guys, the true boa constrictors, um, but they stay a lot smaller and their habitat's a little bit different. Both can be cared for very similarly, but I'm gonna highlight the Boa Imperator today because I know that that's the one that 99 times out of 100 people are working with in the hobby. So without further ado, what is a Boa Imperator? So Boa Imperator is a large, heavy-bodied boa from Mexico, Central, and South America, specifically the country of Colombia. Anywhere else east, I believe, of the Andes Mountains is most likely a boa constrictor, which is the true big boys. There's a lot of confusion between these two, and I think down the road I'm gonna make a video describing the differences between a true boa constrictor like this and the much, much, much more commonly found boa imperator. For today, I'm holding a boa constrictor, but I'm talking about a boa imperator. I didn't have a good sized Central American boa to work with. What people oftentimes don't realize about these guys is they are huge generalists. They do prefer tropical rainforests, but they can be found in semi-arid all the way up to like arid areas of Mexico. Their diet in the wild is primarily medium-sized mammals and birds. So pretty much whatever they can get a hold of that's got warm blood, they will take. Which of course is also a common thread amongst these 
good beginner snakes is that they take these very convenient, easy to find prey options that we can get in captivity. So moving on to what makes them specifically good beginner snakes. As far as handling goes, this is probably the biggest snake on my list. It is probably the easiest to handle snake that I would consider a large snake. So if you're a beginner keeper, but you do want a snake that's gonna have a little bit of girth, a little bit of size on him, this is the one you're going for. Now with a Central American boa, your average size is gonna be somewhere around six feet long. And of course a male is always gonna be a little bit smaller and a female is always gonna be a little bit bigger, but six feet is usually the target for most Central American boas. And certain localities like Dwarf Island boas can stay even smaller than that. When you're talking about the true red tails, the boa constrictors, they do get considerably larger and they can very, very easily hit eight feet long still. Both species are just as docile as a ball python. You know, occasionally you will find one that's a little bit more defensive, but nine times out of 10, boas act just like this and they don't mind being handled for the most part. One notable difference that I find besides the size between handling them and ball pythons is that these guys are not nearly as head shy as ball pythons. So if you touch a ball python on the head, even a very, very well established, well acquainted with people ball python is usually gonna pull his head in. Whereas a boa, typically, if they wanna go somewhere and you touch them on the head, they're just gonna keep pushing into your hand, which can make for some very stubborn and very funny situations where they wanna go somewhere and you don't want them to go somewhere and they're very insistent about where they're going to put their head. A lot of the times when it comes to handling these guys, you can think of them a lot like ball pythons, except that they're bigger. They're, they have that same slow metabolism. They have that same very plodding, methodical movement about them. They're very low energy, very inactive snakes by and large, not a whole lot of moving around. One of the only major differences really is that size and that girth. They do tend to be a little heavier, but if you're okay with lifting, you know, a heavier snake, handling these guys really isn't too difficult either. Again, because of their size, their enclosure is naturally going to be a little bit bigger than the previous two snakes we talked about on this list. And a lot of the times a custom built enclosure is needed for an adult one of these guys. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad beginner snakes. If you know anybody who's handy or anybody who's good at building enclosures or like woodworking projects, you can usually put together a pretty nice enclosure for one of these guys. And you can often find pre-made custom built enclosures online. For an adult Central American boa, a boa imperator, I would definitely say nothing smaller than a four foot enclosure that's preferably two feet deep and at least two feet high. But if you can make that any bigger, they are going to appreciate it and they will use that space. As far as temperatures go on these guys, they do like it a little bit on the warmer side because they do come from a tropical equatorial region. The low end of their enclosure, I would say try to keep it somewhere in that 80 degree range, upwards of like 82 on the cool side, and their hot side where they're gonna sit and digest their meals and bask should be somewhere in the low 90s. 92 degrees is usually pretty appropriate, but as low as like 90 degrees is still fine. As far as humidity goes, these guys do prefer it a little bit more humid, but as we said previously, they are generalists. So a humidity of like 65 or 70% is usually plenty appropriate for these guys. And of course is gonna be subject to a little bit of fluctuation. A good way to tell if you might need to increase the humidity in an enclosure for any snake, but especially these guys as well, is if you start to notice what are called bad sheds. If their sheds come off flaky, they aren't coming off in one piece, they're dry, you find bits and pieces all over the place, that could be an indication that you need to increase the humidity a little bit, or at least give them a spot where they can get increased humidity. Again, like most of the animals on this list, their diet in captivity is just rodents, which is hugely, hugely convenient. And these guys, while they do get a little bigger, can sometimes get to the size where a large rat or a jumbo rat is the appropriately sized rat. But oftentimes, a large is perfectly fine for their whole life. All right, and with that said, these big gentle giants are wrapped up as number three on our top five best beginner snakes. On to our fourth installment on our top five beginner snakes list. I decided to go with one that is similar to the corn snake, um, not quite as popular, but still found readily. And this isn't exactly a species. It's actually a genus that encompasses a lot of species because there is a lot of species of this animal that are available in captivity. Um, so without further ado, we have the king snake. This guy specifically is Lampropeltis gatula. He's an Eastern king snake. And this particular installment, I'm gonna to try to give you a really general assessment 
of all of the common king snakes that are kept in captivity. And the group king snakes actually also includes milk snakes. So there are dozens and dozens of varieties, species and subspecies that I could spend a whole video just going on and on about them. What I'm gonna try to do is give you guys like a general assessment of the handling and the care requirements that make these guys good beginner snakes as a whole. But there will be little specific differences with some of them um, that I'm not gonna be able to address here in this video today. But that being said, all king snakes and milk snakes are new world colubrids, which basically means not a python or a boa. Like most of the snakes on our list, they do really, really well in that temperate, easy to replicate uh, climate. Behaviorally, they are very similar to rat snakes and corn snake. One notable difference is these guys do spend a little bit more time on and under the ground. They're a little bit more fossorial than rat snakes are, which just means that they like to stay ground level. And another really, really cool and interesting fact about all Lampropeltis, all king snakes and all milk snakes, is that these guys are actually snake eaters. That's where they get their common name king snake from. They're king of the snakes. They eat all the other snakes, just like a king cobra. Now moving on to handling with these guys. As far as size goes, they're very similar to corn snakes. They get around three and a half feet long, of course with a little variation based on whether it's a male or a female, but that makes them very, very manageable in size as well. Also like a corn snake, they tend to be very docile, but if I had to say one or the other, these guys tend to put a little bit more of a defensive front up. They like to bluff, they do a little tail rattle, and they can occasionally be a little bit on the bitey side. But again, I would say the vast majority of king snakes that I've worked with and milk snakes tend to be just as docile as this little guy. And of course, he's a youngster as well. He's still got a lot of growing to do. Another interesting behavior that I've observed in these guys personally is if you smell like food, they have a very, very, very strong food response. So this is a snake I like to remind people, make sure you wash your hands after you're done handling your feeders that you plan on feeding them, or make sure you handle them on a day you're not handling any feeders. Of course, their bite doesn't really hurt, especially at this size. Their enclosures are just like corn snakes, very easy to replicate because they don't get too big. Most conventional aquariums over 20 gallons can suit them just fine. One difference between corn snakes and these guys is they're gonna use a lot more ground space and a lot more burrowing space so more hides thicker substrate is a way to consider going with these guys if you do give them climbing space they may very well use it and you can certainly give them that option but you'll probably observe a little bit less climbing with them than you would out of a rat snake or a corn snake temperatures with these guys are fairly approachable as well you know somewhere in like the low end could be room temperature in the middle 70s. The warm side with these guys can be somewhere in the middle to high 80s. Um, I like around 86 is a good one, but it can approach 90 as well. Humidity, again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but the humidity for most of these animals is gonna hover somewhere in that 60, 65% range. Again, I mentioned that these guys do eat snakes in the wild, but a lot of the times hobbyists and pet stores will encourage you to get them on a strictly rodent diet in captivity, and that's for a lot of various reasons. One is the availability of reptile feeders is pretty, pretty low in comparison to rodents. And also the parasite load in reptilian feeders is, is a lot higher. And with all that being said, that wraps up these guys. I think that the variability and the amount of varieties of subspecies and species in these guys makes them such an awesome and attractive option for a first beginner snake. You know, you can get something that's really unique to you where you don't feel like you've got the same one as everybody else. And it can still fall right within those same husbandry requirements that I've already outlined. That wraps up my assessment of the king of all snakes, the king snake. All right, so now on to the fifth and final member of my top five beginner snakes list. Um, I decided I wanted to go with kind of an oddball one, maybe the one you guys wouldn't consider, but would still absolutely fit the bill. Some of you probably already have guessed it or have been thinking about it, but this one is my number five for top five beginner snakes to go with. Without further ado, <coughs> <coughs> Hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it, man. Have a good one. This is the gopher snake. So this guy right here is actually a bull snake. More specifically, he's a hypo bull snake which bull snakes are a subspecies of gopher snake, Pitoophis catenifer. So everything I say about him also applies to any other bull snake and any other gopher snake that you would probably find in captivity. All right, so what is a bull snake? A bull snake or gopher snake is a larger North American colubrid that you'll find throughout like the middle 
out to the west of the country. They are burrow lovers. They use a lot of gopher burrows and gopher tortoise burrows in the wild. Very, very terrestrial snakes. Something that's really cool about them that we haven't seen yet here in this video is these guys, instead of having smooth, glossy scales, they have the keeled scales which feels a little bit rougher, almost like sandpaper in your hands sometimes. And it doesn't give them that shine. They have a much more matte appearance, especially on their backs. These guys are mammal and bird specialists. Again, uh, just like most of the animals on this list. And they get a little bit bigger, like I mentioned, than the corn snakes and the king snakes. They have probably one of the most distinctive defensive bluffing behaviors I've seen, maybe second only to the hognose snake. Their habitat coincides with a lot of rattlesnake species. And these guys have taken it to the extra mile to try to convince any would-be predator that they are indeed a big, dangerous, venomous rattlesnake. So they will do the tail rattle very dramatically, like you'll see in a lot of colubrids, um, but they will also hold their whole body up off the ground in an arched position, just like a rattlesnake, and let out probably one of the loudest hisses in the snake world. These guys actually have a very special end to their trachea that's a little bit thinner than other snakes. And what that does is it allows that air that they exhale to resonate very, very loudly. And if you've never heard a gopher snake or a bull snake or a pine snake hiss, it is probably louder than any other snake hiss you've ever heard which is a very, very, very cool defensive posture that these guys do. They don't usually bite to go along with it though. If they strike, they usually end up headbutting you with their mouth closed. So as far as handling goes with these guys, they are a lot like corn snakes and king snakes, except that they do get a lot bigger. Pretty much any individual will approach five feet with of course some variation based on male or female. So aside from the keeled scales, handling them does feel very similar to handling a corn snake and a king snake. Aside from that, they do get bigger though as well. And another really, really cool notable thing about these guys is the babies come out really big. So while a baby king snake or a baby corn snake can sometimes feel very, very delicate in your hands and you can be worried about accidentally hurting them, these guys come out with monster babies, which can make them feel a lot more handleable too at a younger age and a lot easier to feed because it's easier to get bigger prey items. Where their enclosure should be a little bit bigger than one that you would put together for a corn snake or a king snake. Because they get about five feet long, again, I always recommend at least a four foot enclosure that's two feet deep, but preferably bigger if you can spoil them. They are more terrestrial. They love to burrow, they love to hide under things. But again, if you wanna give them sticks or something to climb on, they certainly may use it. Options never hurt. Temperature range with these guys is also super general, just like a lot of other North American colubrids. You know, the cooler side of temperatures can go down to the low end of room temperature, all the way into the low 70s, and their warm side should be somewhere at least in like the low middle 80s, uh, somewhere where they can get that heat for digestion. A slight notable difference between these guys and some of the other snakes we've looked at so far on this list is these guys are actually pretty tolerant of low humidities in comparison to the other snakes we've talked about today. These guys can have an average humidity in their enclosure of around 40%, which is of course even drier than most people's houses. Overall, these guys can have very healthy sheds and very healthy behaviors with an average overall lower humidity. And of course, their food options make them a great beginner snake, just like every other snake on this list. I'm not giving you guys any snakes that are taking any weird specific prey items. These guys will take rodents, just like your corn snakes, just like your king snakes, just like your boas, and just like your ball pythons. These guys are very, very easy to feed. If you guys have any, any further questions about any of the snakes you've seen on here today, you can always reach out to us, leave a comment, like, subscribe, reach out to our social medias. And hey, if you're in the Gainesville area, come see us personally at Gator City Reptiles. That pretty much wraps up this video. This one had a little bit more of a serious tone than our other ones. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite snake of these five are. If you've worked with any of these, if you have these in your current collection, give us some stories about your experiences with these guys. Whether you think I am right on the money with my five or whether you think I'm absolutely wrong. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm barefoot. Is that a problem? <laughs>